to make your dialogue sound louder, there are a couple of things you need to do. You will notice here, for example, with this audio clip, I have this is dialogue. I have a loud part, a sort of medium part, and a very quiet part right here. Let me play through this really quickly to show you the problem. So this is the really loud passage, just to provide some contrast and some dynamic range. This would be my normal voice here, just uh, again to provide a little bit of dynamic range. And then this would be a very quiet voice. This is actually not necessarily a problem if the audience will be listening back to this on a very good sound system. But if they're listening on something like earbuds while they're on a subway or on a bus <laughs> or even in a car, it can be really, really hard to hear this because they'll set the volume for this, but then they'll have a hard time hearing this. So what can we do? Well, ironically, to make your overall audio louder and more even, you have to reduce the overall amplitude of the loudest parts and increase the amplitude of the quietest parts. So let me show you a couple of tools that can help you do that. First of all, we're going to look at what's called clip gain. First of all is clip gain. Clip gain is literally when you just highlight a portion of your sound file and you can drag it up or down. So increase or decrease the gain. So we could actually make this one match the medium voice by just going like that. Now using clip gain is a little bit different than the next thing we're going to talk about, which is compression. Clip gain, let me just show you here. I'm going to undo and let's, let's zoom way in on this. Got this waveform right here. If we get in way, way close, we can start to see these little dots. These are samples, individual samples. And if we highlight this section right here, and then we come up here and reduce the gain, watch what happens to all of the samples. Notice they all move toward the center line, and the center line is minus infinity, that's silence. They all move towards that center line. So we'll undo that, and we'll zoom back out. Now, the difference with compression is that compression only reduces part of the overall waveform. So you actually set a threshold, say, for example, at the top of my little marker here. Let me just show this to you. I'll pull up a compressor plug-in, single band compressor. And if I set the threshold to minus 16, that's going to be about right here at the top of this window. So it's only going to reduce the gain on the parts that are above this threshold right here. So you can see that would have a different effect on the overall waveform. But what is the practical effect of that? How is it different? Well, if you actually highlight this and reduce the gain, the clip gain, then you are actually making the overall thing sound quieter. However, when you use a compressor and you just affect the very top of the waveform or the peaks of the waveform, it won't necessarily sound quieter, but it will give you more headroom. And that's going to be important when we talk about normalizing just a little later. So in this particular case, in this clip, this is the loudest part, this is the normal voice, and this is the quiet. I actually want this loud part to sound loud, but I need a little more headroom. And here's why. Let me go ahead and show this to you right now. So if I take this clip and bring it down into my match volume panel, if you don't have the match volume panel, come up to window and choose match volume. Once we've done that, I want to loudness normalize this or match the volume to minus 19 LUFS. I set it to ITU RBS 1772 loudness. That's a standard that is a measure of perceived loudness. We're gonna set it to minus 19. Because I have a mono dialogue track here, I'm gonna aim for minus 19, which is a recommendation for distribution of audio that's going to be listened in less than optimal uh, situations, such as a podcast or a video on a mobile phone or in a car, or on a train, whatever it may be. So we'll leave the other settings at their default, use limiting, look ahead time 12 milliseconds, release time 200 milliseconds. But watch what happens when I apply this. You can see that the tops of the peaks get chopped off and the bottoms as well. That's a problem because now we'll have what will sound like distortion. Um, it's still gonna sound really, really crunchy and it's not a great sound. And we had to do that. We had to get that up there as loud as we could to help bring the loudness up on the medium voice and especially on the quiet voice. But still, it's gonna sound very, very uneven. So that's why we may want to actually compress this down so that it has the same amount of headroom as the medium voice. And then we'll actually bring up the quiet part. So here, for example, on the quiet part right here, we could actually bring this up to match or 
nearly match the normal voice. Okay, now watch when I play the normal voice and the quiet voice. Just uh, again to provide a little bit of dynamic range. And then this would be a very quiet voice to again. So it still sounds quieter, but now it's actually very, very even here. So our listeners won't have as difficult a time listening to that. But now we have to take care of this loud part here. <laughs> the especially loud part. So what I'm going to do here is come into effects and let's use that compressor. So amplitude and compression, single band compressor. Now, as I said before, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all of these peaks that are above minus 16. If I come over here and look at the scale here, minus 16 is about at the top of this window right here. And in this case, I've highlighted the portion that I wanna compress. So I'm just gonna compress that part right there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a 3 to 1 ratio. Uh, we've talked about compression in more detail in another video, and you can link to that over here. I'm not going to get too much into the nitty-gritty here, but we want to compress. So every 3 dB that's above the threshold, which is minus 16, so every 3 dB above this is going to get squashed down to 1 dB. So that's how much it's going to compress these peaks. We'll leave the attack at 1 and the release at 150. Those are kind of good default settings to start from when you're compressing dialog. And then we'll put the output gain to 0. Go ahead and apply that. And let's watch what happens to that waveform. OK. You can see now it's brought it in a lot closer here. Now, before we loudness normalize or match volume over here, there's probably I probably want to do one more pass here it's still sticking out a little bit more. And actually this time I'm gonna compress everything. So everything that's above minus 16. So let's bring that back up. Effects, amplitude and compression, single band compressor. Here I am at minus 16 again at the top of this window. So everything above this is gonna get compressed a little bit. There's a peak over here as well, in fact. So let's go ahead and apply that to all of that. Okay, now they're all pretty even. Let's go ahead and play through and see how they line up now. So this is a really loud passage just to provide some contrast and some dynamic range. This would be my normal voice here, just uh, again to provide a little bit of dynamic range. And then this would be a very quiet voice to again. Okay, you can see, now it's much easier to listen to. You still know that this par portion is where I'm nearly yelling. <laughs> this is my normal voice here. And then here is the almost whispering voice. So we've evened them up quite a lot. Now what we could do is actually go ahead and do this match volume here, get this up to minus 19 LUFS, which would be what we'd want to do right before we distribute it to our audience. So there is a way to actually make your dialogue louder. And counterintuitively, you actually have to make it less loud <laughs> in some parts here, for example, these louder parts, um, so that you can even it out and level out the audio so that it's easy for people to listen to when you finally distribute it. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.